Welcome to the Fantasy Zone. Get ready! Regardless of what you think about the game itself, I don't think anyone can deny that the original Super Mario Bros. is one of, if not the most important video games of all time. In the mid-1980s, game design as we know it was starting to see huge changes and shifts, and Mario, along with the Nintendo revolution that would revive gaming in North America, was at the forefront of it. As new video game consoles came out, the games themselves would shed away the old coin-op mentality of design, making games that were no longer about the high score, but instead about reaching a real, genuine end. Games that were still ruthlessly hard to keep you at them for a while, but were more reasonable in difficulty since the aim wasn't to get kids dunking quarters into slots anymore. Needless to say, the original Super Mario Bros. was a smash hit, being the poster child for a new wave of game design and home consoles from overseas. So it was only natural that a sequel would be put out less than a year later. Super Mario Bros. 2 was born as a launch title for the Famicom's Disk System expansion. But, quite infamously, this isn't the Mario 2 we got over here. Nintendo of America's quality assurance team, led by one Howard Phillips, decided the game was a bit too aggravating for its own good. Thus, with Nintendo of Japan's blessing, they took a somewhat related platformer, also made in-house by Nintendo, changed some of the sprites around to make it Mario-related, and released that as our Mario 2. It was a pretty big deal for players to eventually find that a classic established game in the Mario canon wasn't originally a Mario title at all. So the Japanese Mario 2, dubbed by some as the real Mario 2 and later given the subtitle of Lost Levels to distinguish, always had something of a forbidden fruit appeal to fans of the series. But now, years later, with the game being released on Virtual Console and in various compilations, the genie's out of the bottle, and now that we actually have access to Lost Levels, it's not hard to see where Phillips and the rest of NOA were coming from. It is ruthlessly hard. In fact, for those who think that Mario games play it way too safe and easy, it's a real system shocker. But if you ask me, Lost Levels doesn't really stick the landing with this kind of difficulty. It is, in my opinion, the weakest title in the entire Mario catalog. To start with, a lot of issues in the game stem from its title. There wasn't really such thing as expansion packs or what have you back in the day, so Lost Levels had the burden of being branded as a sequel. And aside from the upscale difficulty, there is nothing here to build on the original game. The new mechanics they add are so minuscule and few to begin with that 90% of the game might as well be a second quest for the original. Same engine, same graphics, same obstacles, same music, damn near everything. It's a complete retread. Then, when you take the heightened difficulty into account, you need to add another sequel issue, a serious lack of conveyance. Lost Levels does not stand on its own as a game. Right from the get-go, it operates under the assumption that the player is familiarized with the first Super Mario Bros. The dev team was actually conscious of this and tried to give something of a heads up by putting a four Super Players sticker on the front of the case, but it's still heartbreaking to imagine some Japanese kid in the 80s inevitably playing it anyway, unfamiliar with the original and getting blindsided by the steep difficulty curve. But anyway, let's look at this difficulty up close since we've been talking about it so much. While classic NES games are often prided on having hard but fair difficulty, Lost Levels is anything but. A lot of the game boils down to pixel-perfect, precise platforming which requires the player to make flawless jumps with no room for error. Your main enemy here isn't Koopas or Goombas, it's bottomless pits that are littered all over the place. Though to be fair, enemies will most likely kill you in one hit anyway since each level constantly skimps out on the power-ups. Oh, and don't forget about cheap traps you can't see coming like the reverse warp zones. And with how much you're dying, don't think that they adjusted the number of lives accordingly. You still start it with three. Thankfully, they at least had the decency to add a built-in continue option without the AB star code from the original game, but you're still sent all the way back to the first stage of the world. It's not the beginning of the game, thank god, but just because it's better comparatively doesn't mean it's not an obnoxious hassle to climb your way up from the first stage of each world, not getting the chance to properly digest and memorize each level since you're playing them all in sequence. There needs to be a balance set between how much damage is being dealt to the player and how hard their punishment is. And when everything in the game is basically instantaneous death, there really needs to be an adjustment to the lives or continue system. But why is Lost Levels this brutal? What inspired the developers to ramp up the difficulty to such an extreme? Well, not long after the release of the original Super Mario Bros. on the Famicom, Nintendo decided to make a port for arcades dubbed Versus Super Mario Bros. To make sure players wouldn't know 100% what to expect going into it, the original dev team were called back to make a handful of new levels, and also make those levels as sadistic as possible to squeeze a few more bucks out of unsuspecting kids. All six of those levels would be reused for Lost Levels, by the way. That's how arcade games usually are, but there's a bit of a sad irony with how the original Super Mario Bros. mostly did away with the archaic, unreasonable game design of the coin-op days to usher in a new era, and then its direct follow-up goes right back to the arcade mindset. Hardcore, extreme difficulty like this has been nearly perfected in more recent titles like Super Meat Boy, for example. Obviously, Team Meat had a lot more time in retrospective to put out a superior game, but at the end of the day, despite the fact that everything also kills you in one hit in Meat Boy, it's a far more enjoyable and less aggravating game to play despite its legendary difficulty. All thanks to the novel concept of no lives, no continues. 
Writing for Gamma Sutra, co-creator Edmund McMillan discussed the merits of abandoning the live system and giving the player an infinite amount of chances. To quote the man himself, removing lives altogether lets the designer base the difficulty more on actual level design and challenge, and less around the penalty of losing lives and restarting. In doing so, the formula for difficulty changes. The player no longer has to worry about dying, and the penalty for death basically turned into the amount of time you took to restart after death and the length of the current level. None of this was taken into account with lost levels. It is a game that gives you three lives and designs its courses like it's given you an infinite amount. Now, Lost Levels tries to mitigate this by putting an infinite one-up trick right at the beginning of the game. I guess, since the game is for super players, you're supposed to just instantly spot this Koopa and realize you can farm endless lives out of it. But why the extra step? Really, the unlimited continues were a move in the right direction, but simply scrapping the lives or letting you continue on the level you died in would have been a far better choice. How was one expected to find this trick back in the day without a game magazine or guidebook? Oh, and despite being released on the disk system, which absolutely had the ability to save, if you turn the power off, you have to start from the beginning. No picking up where you left off. With how long it's going to take you to grind away at each world bit by bit, you're going to be leaving your TV idle for a long time if you want to actually beat this thing in one sitting. Thankfully, later compilations like Mario All-Stars and Mario Deluxe included the ability for you to save your progress, shut off the console, and come back at a later point. In fact, since they're bundled with the original game, I dare say that these compilations are the ideal way for one to play Lost Levels nowadays. Like I said before, Lost Levels doesn't stand on its own since it assumes the player is familiar with the first game already. So, when it's bundled with the original game, the lack of conveyance isn't as much of an issue, especially in Deluxe where you need to beat the original Mario in order to access it. And wouldn't you know it, both games let you continue right on the level you died on. I like to think of it as acknowledgement that the original game was way too out of hand. None of this is to suggest that Lost Levels is a horrible game. It's not. Those levels, as dastardly as they are, do have some enjoyment to them when you don't have to worry about lives or continues. But nowadays, besides being a curiosity as a direct follow-up to one of the most influential games of all time, I don't think there's much warrant to give this one a replay over the other classics. Back in the day, when players in English-speaking territories realized our Mario 2 was a reskin of another game, there was a bit of a backlash and insistence that Lost Levels was the true Mario 2. Since then, it's been made apparent that Doki Doki Panic might have had more in common with Mario than we realized. But even back then, our Mario 2 was eventually released back in Japan as Super Mario USA. The collection of characters introduced in that title would be fully integrated into the Mario universe, and a lot of the staff on USA, including director Kensuke Tanabe, would later return to help with Mario 3. So not only is Doki Doki Mario USA, or whatever you want to call it, basically a proper canonized Mario game at this point, for my money, I think we in North America and Europe got the better end of the bargain with this one. And to access the bonus world, you need to beat the game eight times. Yeah.